Remember when you were in school, working on a group project? Three kids would put in the work and the fourth would just sign their name and collect the A despite contributing nothing. Th that was me, I, I was that kid. There's a similar phenomenon in sports. It's something called the vulture. If you've ever played fantasy football, you know that there's RBs who carry the ball down to the goal line only for another back that totes the rock down at the one. Seems unfair, doesn't it? But there is more than one type of enjoyer of statistical carcasses in every sport. Today, we're gonna learn about the most blatant vultures in all of sports. MLB, most 3-0 count home runs. When your mean Mercedes sent a 3-0 Williams Astudito pitch to Neptune in an 11-run game, it highlighted the major divide in Major League Baseball. Old school and new school. While Mercedes had plenty of defenders who were tired of hearing about the unwritten rules of baseball, the young slugger's own 77-year-old manager was incensed and his criticism of Mercedes just about ruined his confidence and almost his entire career. You know, I was upset because that's not a time to swing 3-0. and All this over a 3-0 count. It used to be that when you were up three pitches in and at bat, you didn't even take the bat off your shoulder. And if you did take a cut, that ball better be in your wheelhouse down to the square inch. But the thought process is changing and there's data to back that up. In 2008, the first year of pitch tracking, batters swung a little over 7% of the time on 3-0 counts. 10 years later, that number rose by 4%, proving that hitters are less and less prone to miss an opportunity to hit a tank and cash in. Some contemporary players like Pete Alonso, Aaron Judge, Giancarlo Stanton, Freddie Freeman, and Ronald Acuna Jr. have even swung at 30% of pitches with the 3-0 count. There was, however, the biggest vulture of them all. Hall of Famer Jim Tomey played in the bigs from 1991 to 2012, racking up 612 home runs before hanging up the cleats at age 41. Of all those dingers, Tomey hit 17 of them when the count was 3-0, and just for reference, he saw a 3-0 count 497 times in his career. Barry Bonds was up 3-0 1,088 times in his career and only launched 10 home runs on that particular count, because so many of those were 3-0 by design, and the fourth pitch was meant to be as far away from him as fucking possible. Tomey wasn't just swinging the bat, he was discerning, posting an OPS of 2.33 on 3-0. and But when he was pulling the trigger, he made it count, posting an MLB record 1,403 slugging percentage on loaded counts. Or is that 1.403? Who cares? Honestly, why not? Until now, nobody knew he feasted on 3-0 counts for 2% of his homers. I salute you, Jim. NHL most empty net goals. In a December 22 matchup with the Philadelphia Flyers, Caps left winger Alex Ovechkin scored goals number 794 and 795 of his career. Third best of all time and just 99 goals short of the great one, Wayne Gretzky. The only catch, not just one, but both of those goals were empty netters scored within 86 seconds of each other. Free meals, if you ask me. Travis Konecki didn't exactly take kindly to those historic goals, but they both counted whether or not there was a goalie standing in the way. So if you're new to hockey, what exactly is an empty net? Well, late in a close game, when a team that's down a goal or two, they'll pull their goalie in favor of an extra skater that might allow them to tie up the score. It means it's much easier to pot a goal against literally nothing than an actual goalie. Well, at least I thought he was gonna until he blew it. Regardless, like swinging away 3-0, scoring an empty net goal was seen as taboo for a long time in the NHL. Hockey has changed since Alex Ovechkin made his debut in 2005, and he's begun to take advantage of the league's more lax attitude for empty netters. Ovi has scored a total of 54 empty net goals in his career, making up 6.5% of his 822 career goals. What's more is that Ovechkin's empty netters have increased over time, showing that he's gotten progressively more comfortable with going goblin mode to challenge the record. As staggering as Ovi's figure is, is he's not the all-time leader in empty netters. Who is? Why, Wayne Gretzky, who drilled 56 empty netters, making up 6.2% of his 894 career goals. Of course, neither Ovechkin nor Gretzky are as opportunistic as Marion Hossa. Hossa only has 525 career goals, but an astounding 7.6% of those 
were scored on an empty net. He looks kind of like a ginger vulture if you ask me. If you're a guy, you've probably been some places on the internet, you probably didn't belong. It's okay, I won't tell anyone. But when you're surfing the web, that's when you're most vulnerable. Cyber hackers, identity thieves, ransomware, all these are coming after you. That's why you need private internet access, a VPN that is a shield to protect you from all those attacks. Private internet access hides your IP address and encrypts your internet connection, shielding you from the prying eyes of ISPs, network admins, and government censors. It also never records or stores your user data, and its no logs policy has been proven multiple times in a court of law. I love how it can be used to watch sports that might not be available in your region. Change your location and say goodbye to blackouts. Right now, you can use my link below and grab an 83% discount on private internet access. That's just $2.03 a month and you also get four extra months absolutely free. You can use one private internet access subscription to protect an unlimited amount of devices at the same time. Again, just go to my link below and get an 83% discount. Just $2.03 a month plus four months free. NBA, literal free throws. We tune into the NBA for a lot of things. Vicious dunks, ankle breaking moves, and deep threes. A long montage of free throws is not one of those things, and it still feels like we spend more and more time at the charity stripe every season, and professional basketball is worse for it. There's one team in particular that's the worst offender of all, and they reside in Los Angeles. Yes, the Lakers shoot more free throws than anyone in the NBA. On a per game basis, they take 26 0.6 shots from the charity stripe, more than a half a free throw more than the second highest team, the Detroit Pistons, who get to the line 26 times per game. Doesn't exactly seem to be helping either of them, does it? But that's just the sheer volume. Let's rephrase the question. Who earns the highest majority of their points from the line? The team with that distinction is leagues better than the Lakers and the Pistons. I'm talking about the Philadelphia 76ers. The Sixers earn 8.5% of their points from the line, 0.4 more points than Detroit, and a full five points more than Golden State, the least vulture team in the league because they don't drive the basket. Now, your brain might automatically tell you that notorious free throw and contact merchant James Harden is the reason for this impossible to watch basketball, and to an extent that is true, just not this year. Harden is attempting a free throw and a half less than he did a year ago, meaning someone else is shouldering the load at the stripe, and that's Joel Embiid. Embiid doesn't attempt the most free throws in the league, that's Giannis Antetokounmpo. Antenna Corompo, but he picks up a full 30% of his total points at the line, whereas the Greek Freak only collects about a fourth via the free throw. In terms of sheer percentage of points from free throws, that title belongs to Jimmy Butler, but Embiid spends more time at the line. And who is the all-time leader in free meals? Why, world's greatest dad, Carl Malone, who hit 9,787, accounting for 26% of his point total of 36,928, the third highest in NBA history. Ultimately, vulturing in basketball is a sound strategy, and getting to the line is smart, but it makes for a truly unwatchable game. NFL short yardage TDs. At the beginning of this video, I tease the ultimate vulture, the running back who gets the ball at the one yard line despite not doing the work to get his offense down there. This year, the vulture king was former Lions and current Saints running back Jamal Williams, who scored 14 of his 17 touchdowns from inside the five yard line and 10 from just a yard out. Honestly, that's pretty impressive that the Lions kept getting tackled that close to pay dirt. Williams has gotten plenty of flack for his Kyler Murray-sized touchdown runs, but his critics tend to forget that he did actually contribute a career-high 1,066 yards on the ground and amazing post-game interviews. I don't, didn't talk about I don't watch TV. You don't watch TV? You didn't hear about it? I don't, I'm trying not to cuss. I don't care. Still, Williams' abundance of tiny TDs is in stark contrast to another Lions back, perhaps the greatest to ever do it, Hall of Famer Barry Sanders. Sanders scored 112 touchdowns in his career, and just 12 of them came from inside the one-yard line. 
twice in 1993, Sanders gained every yard on a Lions drive before backup Derek Moore got the glory, scoring a one-yard touchdown that was served up to him by Barry on a silver platter. From 1993 to 1998, the Lions scored 26 one-yard rushing touchdowns, and only one of them was scored by Barry Sanders, the man who benefited from Sanders' hard work on the group project, none other than fullback Tommy Vardell, nicknamed Touchdown Tommy. Vardell scored 22 touchdowns in his career, and 17 of those came from just a yard out. In 1997 and 98 alone, Vardell punched it in 12 times on the ground, 11 from the one yard line, and one long one from three yards out. Easy there, Tommy. During that same time, he racked up just 159 yards rushing. So doing the math, TD Thomas had one touchdown to his name for every 13 yards he gained. By comparison, Sanders had one touchdown for every 236 yards. Barry did all the work and Tommy just signed his name, giving further credence to the phrase, doing the lion's share of work. Damn vultures. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Hell, you made it this far. You might as well subscribe. I'm Five Points Foods, and you made it to my next video.